Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Gordon and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we'll bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Welcome, welcome, good morning, welcome to the Call by God podcast. I am Adni Gode, and this morning I have a special guest with me, Sister Zandra. Today we are going to be discussing none other than Mary, the mother of Jesus. Ms. Zandra, it is such an amazing honor to have you on with me this morning. But before we begin, let me do this. I want to thank my host for entrusting me to do do this on my own because I'm like, oh, Lord, are you sure? But he was like, you got this, Adney, go ahead. And number two, I want to thank our guests for always listening to us. Um, you don't know how much of a blessing it is when you um, listen to the, the, the discussions, the biblical characters, and even leave comments for us. So I just want to thank you all so very much for all that you are doing with this ministry because it is a ministry. Well, Ms. Zandra, say good morning to our guests. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Zandra Sellers. Adney, I thank you always for this opportunity. Always, girl. So, Ms. Zandra, the, the mother of Jesus, right? Just, I want you to start. You know, Adney, as we were preparing for this discussion today, um, just what the scriptures did speak about Mary, Um, not a lot, but what the scriptures covered, um, as you and I talked about before, we gleaned so much beginning with the fact that when the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary, Mary was only about 13 years old. And that, that plays a very significant part because the angel Gabriel beginning in Luke Chapter one appears to her and tells her, listen, your life has been favored. This is what's going to happen. You're going to conceive the, the, the Messiah, that, 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 you know, and I, you know, Mary's 13. So of course, how was this? So, you know, just imagine, just take yourself back to being 13, 13, 14, you know, that's roughly what. The, the get the estimated age of her, how old she was back then going back to that and you have this angel appear to you telling you you're gonna bear the messiah what are your thoughts i love that that you brought it up that that point because i i'm i have my first child at the age of 14 right it wasn't an angel that appeared to me <laughs> It was me being fast and doing the things that grown people were doing without being married. But in all seriousness, to hear the angel said, and I want to read it. It says, um, now in the sixth month, and I'm reading it from the Amplified. Now in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and eminent and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. Israel forever and for his end of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin and have and have no intimacy with any man? Then the angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you 
and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. And listen, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For with um for with God nothing is is or ever shall be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. And I'm thinking to myself, may it be done to me as the Lord has said to freely open your heart to God. And this is the call, the call by God podcast, right? This was Mary's calling to be the mother of the Messiah, the mother of um, the word, the creator of life, the like she was carrying God in her womb. And I, and I just understanding the humility that resided inside of Mary for her to say, what you want me to be what? Faith without hesitation here. You know, we understanding the the times that they were in, they were under the Mosaical law, understanding that she was about 13 or 14, understanding that she was about to conceive a child. And she said, um, you know, Lord, I, I'm a virgin. Uh, do you know and, and think about this in her mind? She's got the the dangers of conceiving a child being betrothed and you know a betrothal back then was like you're almost married without being you know it's like serious here so <laughs> you you got the betrothal going on she never had sex before <laughs> she got all this play I, lord do you know your word says lord the word that you you invented your word says that i could be killed I, I could, I could be, I, I'm not, Lord, I'm on, I only live about 13, 14 years of my life. Come on, Father. Hello. <laughs> please, please don't, Lord. But, but she didn't even say, please don't do this to me. What she said was what, Annie? What you just read? Let me make sure I say it correctly. And Mary said, behold, I am the Lord's servant. And um, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel left her. She didn't hesitate. She didn't question. She didn't ask why. She said she didn't say why me. She didn't bring up the mosaical law. She didn't do any of those things. She said, may it be done unto me as the Lord has said. Point blank, period. I am his servant. How how often do we do that? We we're tasked to we're called. And we we the thing is, we verbalize all these obstacles. We we would you know, we would say, Lord, but I got this going on. I got this. I can't do this. I have this. Lord, no. We don't say, well, may it be to me. We would question God. We would say, okay, first of all, you know I'm a virgin, right? Second of all, how do you anticipate this on happening? Because uh, what I know and understand about conception is I need a man <laughs> in order for that to happen. But she didn't do all she said is, well, how can this be? I'm a virgin. Don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit going to come on you. All right, then. I'm the Lord's servant. Let it be done unto me, as you have said. And at her age. And, her, and that's the point I want to bring up. How many of us are raising our children to have that mindset of let it be unto me, as the Lord has said, or even by our actions, teaching our children this Mary had such a humility about her and that humility, even though she knows the law, what could have happened to her? God said it, it's done. There was no question. There was no um, doubt. Let it be unto me. And I, and I, not only that, just to know that her cousin Elizabeth, who was called barren, is pregnant. So she was like, OK, so God made sure he solidified this for me to make sure I understood that this was of him because my cousin is how old and she's now getting pregnant. OK, look, God, I'm yours because and to be found, found highly favored at her age at me. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. And describe what highly favored mean to our audience. Highly favored is exactly what it is. God found favor upon her. And it's so interesting. You think about how this has been prophesied. Let's go back even to Isaiah 7 when the Bible talks about a virgin conception. You know, so this had been prophesied through the years. So you would think that Jewish women throughout the generations were wondering, when is it going to happen? Is it going to be me? That, that, that Just thinking, you know, human wise, of course, this was the, this was prophesied all the way back in Isaiah. You think, I wonder, I wonder, Lord, is it going to, am I going to be the one highly favored and chosen and moving on to the next generation? Well, it didn't happen in this generation. When is it going to happen? Um, but God favored, he blessed, he was, she was highly favored favor all his favor his favor not all his favor thank god but all that favor rested upon her that brings me to the point of what could mary have done to find that favor in the sight of god um because to me to 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 get that such a greeting as that to me it shows that mary was obedient to her parents. She loved God with all her heart, all her soul, all her mind, and all her strength, right? Because isn't that what the word tells us to love the Lord thy God? Um, and and it's telling the parents to teach this to their children so they could write it on the tapestry of their hearts. And 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 I'm like, that's what God saw like she was an obedient child, like she grew up and whatever her parents did, she walked according to not only the law of Moses, but also to the law and the rules of her parents. That for me is what stuck stood out. Like to be that favored at the age of 13, mm. you had to have been in a state or a, an intimate relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. for him to give you this title of favored one. You know, and it it um it plays in her song, Mary's song. Fast forward to Luke chapter one, verse 46 to 53. I'm not going to read it, but one of the things in 40. 6 to 48, she says, and Mary said, I mean, the word says, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. Let me read that in the Amplified right quick, because I love it. It says, and Mary said, my soul magnifies and exalts the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior, for he has looked with loving care on the humble state of his maidservant. For behold, from now on, all generations will count me blessed and happy and favored by God. The humility in that song, like she didn't exalt herself at all. She exalted God. Amen. And I think that's what being blessed in, in, in what, when we're found blessed by God, it's to give, give back. It's to give him the glory. It's to give, return it to him. Mary gives us the example of what our lives should be like. Mary gives us the example of how we should conduct and carry ourselves, especially as women. Um, there is something that the Lord has placed inside of us. And 
that thing is so amazing and beautiful. Um, I remember it being shared with me and I was listening to a minister, um, a pastor. Um, and he said, when women pray, they shake heaven. And it's not to say that men don't do the same thing, but it's just something about a father and his daughter when his daughter comes to him and is is completely humbled before him and meek before him that he receives her. And that's what I see as us, as you know, the daughters of God, that our attitudes, our heart must match the attitude and heart of Mary in the sense of being able to say that my soul magnifies and exalts the Lord. No matter what we're going through, that must be the attitude that we have. Um, it, it shares that, you know, when we read, she wasn't very rich, right? She wasn't very rich. And, and most importantly, it's like she... She didn't let that detour her calling. You actually believe, yeah, she was from a poor family in Galilee. Yeah. So I just, uh, I'm just so um, in, in, in troll, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, just enamored <laughs> by, by her, you know, humility. And what I want us to discuss is like her lineage, right? Because a lot of times people just focus on Joseph and the fact that Joseph comes from the line of uh, of Judah, but Mary too. Not realizing that, yes, Joseph comes from the line of Judah, but I mean, people know this, okay, Joseph wasn't his, his I mean, Joseph was his earthly father, but there was no bloodline between Joseph and Jesus but I love this, what you're getting ready to say. I just had to throw that in there so they would understand. Mary was from the lineage of Judah as well. So Mary is um, like the reason that he's referred to as the king because that that bloodline that he comes from. Yes, Joseph. Um, and, and, and we can't talk about Joseph because, you know, it's going to come up. But it's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful how we read about how Joseph, like the angel came to him and told him, hey, don't worry about this. We got this. And he says, okay, I'm going to go ahead. This is my wife. Okay. She is my wifey. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but what it does, it it solidifies. It, it, we all, we, we, we do this, you know, so that, of course, God could be given the glory. So it's, it just understanding that the lineage of Mary is spoken about in, in Luke chapter one or three, two, sorry, understanding that the lineage of Mary is established in scriptures solidifies that Jesus was Jewish. Yes. The, the tribal affiliation, um, the is, um, taken from the father's side. We get it. But, you know, if you want to go all the way back to, um, Second Samuel, and I mean, just through the scriptures, when God promised David that there will always be a, a seed that sits upon his throne. Yes, we see that in a spiritual sense, but we also see can see that um, in a, a physical sense with Jesus actually being from the tribe of Judah. People would say, well, Joseph wasn't his blood. You're right. But Mary was. Absolutely. And that's the beautiful part is that God is so strategic. <laughs> yes. Like he is so strategic in how he, he did this thing. Like I'm going to use this virgin who comes from the bloodline of David, but the man that she is with also comes from the bloodline of David. Like my family, they'll be like, that's disgusting. They, they cousins or, or something. They, you know, that's just nasty, but we have to understand half of us are related regardless. <laughs> right. Cause stop it, Eddie. I want to make that correction. I said Luke chapter one. It's Luke chapter three about his genealogy. I just want to put that correction out there. But you're hilarious, Eddie. Don't go there. Cousins make dozens, they say, <laughs> and they do, because that's how the world has been populated. But all jokes aside, I'm just loving how um, God is strategic in choosing Mary, um, this favored young lady to bring his son into this world, to save this world. 
And I, I will challenge our readers, our, our listeners, to read the story, the birth of Christ in Luke. I, um, just seeing how the angel comes down to f- talk to Zachariah and then goes to Mary. And then Mary goes and visits and you see how she's like, oh my gosh, the Lord has found like found me favored and people will always talk about me, but it's not even about them talking about me. It's because God has chosen me for such a great work. This calling that he placed on my life is so beautiful. Um, I have to exalt and magnify his name. And I want to leave this with our listeners. How many of us can say that God has called us for something so great and that we will exalt and magnify his name from the marriage that you're in. You know, when you look at the the things that God brings you through and you see the plans that come through that, right? And you're like, oh my goodness, God chose us for this. Like there's a there's a dear brother and sister in Christ that I am in awe of. Like they have the, their empires already be, being built. And I see God's hand. Like he purposely put these two together to build this empire. And that empire is not to glorify them, but to glorify him. Go ahead, Sandra. Now, I was just thinking, you know, as we talk about Mary and being um, being chosen to give birth to his son, to his son being the son of God. And just thinking about the arduous journey she had to make, you know, while she's heavily pregnant, Joseph and Mary had to make the journey to be counted in the census to Bethlehem. And just think all those thoughts going through her head, like, okay, God, and I'm thinking from a human perspective, I got to make this journey. I'm pregnant, Lord. I'm heavily pregnant. I'm about to have a baby and I got to take this journey. (laughs) This wasn't no small journey either. Just all, like you said, being chosen to do that, being highly favored, willing to take on such a task and all that entails. Cause it didn't just say she just popped up, had the baby right then. She had, they they had to go through some things. They They had to go through some things. If the Lord came to us and told us we had to take a journey on a donkey for some miles to go have a baby. First of all, I'd be like, okay, Lord, this is immaculate conception. But this <laughs> I'd be like, a donkey? Not, 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 no, you ain't even give me a horse. You gave me, that ain't happening. Mm. Look, what they say, donkeys are used for the work of, like, cause they're such humble creatures, but like, it, it could not have been a comfortable, one because you know both you and I have had children and let me tell you that son of mine nearly killed me because he was huge (laughs) he was super long I could barely breathe so I can only imagine her little frame carrying this other human being inside of her um you know the kicking and 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 everything on top while she's riding on this donkey and this baby probably like hold up wait a minute what's going on because what we feel they feel so I just, again, I just love and appreciate how she just, she, she didn't complain. She didn't say a mumbling word. She went with her husband to be counted in the senses. Then of course she goes into labor. And that to me is her giving birth to the son of God. And I know what it was like for me. They didn't even have like epidurals back then. She's a virgin. She about to give birth. And I can only imagine what she was thinking. (laughs) Like I'm supposed to do this with no type of uh, help. Then in this cave, what they believe to be a cave or a stable, um, there's some discussion on that, but who cares? The point is, it's not, it's not even in what they would call, consider a hospital or a clinic back then. It's in a very unsanitary place. And then to have your baby laid in a manger where animals eat out of. Wow, that right there is powerful. Like, again, here is God's perfect will. He's not going to come like most people thought he would come. He comes into the world meek and lowly, like in the most unsanitary way. 
the most like you go to the hospital, they cleaning up your room before they put you in there to give birth. But here it is. He is born in such a way that it's not even he wasn't even born on the donkey. He was in the stables where the animals are. Yeah, you know, we 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 see, like I said, the prophecies of our, our Messiah being told in Isaiah, and uh, he's called Prince of Peace, and all these various things in Isaiah seven, and it's so interesting, like you said, um, um, how he's brought into this world, and, and and yes, we're focusing on Mary. Mary had the the task of delivering our savior. But like you said, him being brought in such a lowly state. Um, and if you fast forward, Mary pondered all of these things when it later, you know, we were, we were going to talk about how she, how she pondered all of these things, all of those things that was happening to her. But I wanted to read Isaiah seven where it says, uh, and I want to start Isaiah chapter seven and verse 10, it says, then the Lord spoke again to King Ahaz saying, ask a sign for yourself from the Lord, your God. I'm sorry. One that will conceive you that God has spoken and will keep his word. Make your request as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then Isaiah said, hear then, O house of David, it is too small a thing for you to try the patience of men. But will you try the patience of my God as well? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Listen carefully. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. God with us. Um, he will eat curd. Well, I'm sorry. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to refuse evil and choose good. For before the child will know enough to refuse evil and choose good, the land of Canaan, whose two kings you dread, will be destroyed, both Ephraim and Aram. Annie, and then if you want to turn over to chapter nine and read verses six and seven. Six and seven reads, all right, where you at? For to us, a child is born. To us, a son shall be given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There shall be no end to the increase of his government and and of peace. He shall rule on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. And just reading about, you know, her first and foremost naming him Emmanuel. And we know um, Jesus is Joshua, salvation. The name uh, means, you know, um, salvation. But Emmanuel, God with us, like she gave birth to our heavenly Savior. She gave birth to the Word. She gave birth to her Savior. That song that says, Mary, did you know that your baby boy? Like when I listen to those lyrics, he he knew you like he was your daddy before you became his mama. <laughs> that's exactly how it is. Let's be honest. That, that's that's exactly how it is. He was your father. He was your father. God chose you for this amazing walk. And what I love about Mary is her humility, even with her being his mom. Right. She pondered things that he did in her heart, like when he <laughs> got lost and told her, didn't you know I must be about my father's business? And she pondered what he said in her heart because she's thinking on the flesh side, well, Joseph, your daddy. But then she's like, oh, he talking about his heavenly daddy, right? And that's- She also thinking, boy, you got lost. Don't play with me. 
do that again. See if I don't snatch you up. This is true. But then her spiritual side say, oh, you know, it's the son of God. You know, <laughs> let, me, let me fix up my position right now. <laughs> and she pondered that thing in her heart. And then the most amazing thing, when he grows up, his mom becomes one of his disciples. She walks with him. She walks the journey with him to the point where they go to a wedding that runs out of um, wine. And she says to him, they out of wine. And she's looking at him like, my hour ain't come yet. And she was like, whatever he tell you to do, do it. Like she completely ignored what he said and was like, here you go, Jesus. But the co- that shows his respect for his mom. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. The, his 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 honor and respect for his mom, and and um we see that come full circle. Yeah, at the cross, and 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 just to like still piggyback on that, just the dialogue that could have taken place between Mary and Jesus before she said all of that. She's like, hey Jesus, you know we had this wedding, you know we know these people, you know they you know they marrying this person who has this great stature and, you know, you don't want them to be embarrassed about, you know, and he is like, my hour ain't come yet. And she just ba- basically tells the servants, whatever he tells you, because it's like she knew in her heart that he would not allow them to be embarrassed. So he just went there. And I'm all about facial expressions and like kind of nullifying people's statements in a sense of uh, Jesus is like, woman, my hour ain't come yet. And it's like, Mary's like, uh, go do what he told you. <laughs> Just do what he tells you. To. You get what I'm saying? Like, do what he tells you to do. Um, <laughs> Just not nullifying what he said, but it's it, like you said, I think she knew in her heart that he understood the task at that moment. What, how important it was for them to do, for him to do what he had to do. Because, of, of course, we understand customs back then. And then finally, we bring this to a close with her at the cross and then being counted with the disciples in Acts chapter one, but a mother, and we didn't even discuss this when Simeon made the prophecy and told her that a sword would pierce her heart. And you see her at the cross, the sword piercing her heart coming to fruition because she knew that he had to die on the cross but she also knew I am um, I she also knew I am a mother watching my child die for me right that's the thing we yes I like you said I know he had the his his life was already pre-planned he he already had this task he I knew and I'm talking about being married I you know that he was born to die but he is still mine Son. And how many times we as human beings said, he, he was just a boy. A mother should never bury her child. But Mary did. At the cross, Mary did. Mary did at the cross. At so the she cross. saw him at the cross. But how much love and respect did Jesus show her at the cross? Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. He still honored her while he was on the cross. And the beautiful thing is the favor. He still showed favor upon her, right? Because this favor followed her all her life with him, right? And then now our final thing is her being counted with the disciples in Acts 1. Um, Let's go there. And I just think that was just so beautiful that she walked this journey with her son. She she really, truly was there with him with the miracles, with the saving of the souls, the teachings. I could only imagine her cooking food for him, saying, Jesus, come on, come and eat. And he, <laughs> right, because, you know, that's what mamas do, baby. You hungry? Come and get some of this, come, come and get some of this fish, um, fish and grits. <laughs> 
They, you know, they had to start it. They had it some way. Fish and grits. <laughs> You know, and on a good night, it was lamb. Amen. <laughs> so, in Acts one fourteen, it says, "All these, with one mind and one purpose, were continually devoting themselves to prayer, waiting together along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his and with his brothers." Now. Okay, no, I'm going to just start at, stop at 14. So it was Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. They all were counted in that upper room waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. So she was there. She was there. Like you said, she was his disciple. That's beautiful. That's, that's so beautiful. Everything came full circle. That going back, like you said, to that prophecy in Simeon, um, he was going to be a light to, a, you know, salvation for his people and all of that. Simeon said all of that, and she got to see this whole prophecy play out. That's beautiful. So I have a question for our audience. How many of us are willing to look at our children and see the gifts that God has played, placed in them? And to watch those gifts and nurture those gifts and allow those gifts to come to full circle, full fruition, feed the gifts without compromising your virtue, without compromising your Christian walk, without compromising who you are in Christ. Because many of our of us who have children who are in sports and they got a game on Sunday will miss service so they could go and play. But how beautiful would it be if you change the mindset of that coach and say, Hey, I know he's your star athlete, but he won't be playing on Sundays. If you want him, you're going to have to change the time or the day that he plays or on a Wednesday when he has practice and you're like, Oh, he won't be there for practice because um, I know he's your star athlete, but he's Jesus's star athlete. So I'm challenging us parents to really look at the life of Mary and see how she raised her son. Even though he's God and sinless, there were still some things she she showed him. Her humility, her compassion, and her love. He had to have seen that in her, even though it's already there. He had an example in his mom. So can we challenge ourselves as mothers and as fathers to be that for our children? Can our children see the humility of God in us? Can they say that my mama would not compromise this so I won't compromise that? Any final words, Sandra? No, you said it. You said it all. All right, world. The discussion with Mary is beautiful. Read it for yourself. I promise you, you will not regret it. Just learning. It doesn't say much about her, but it says a lot. All right, world. Thank you for uh, joining us. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. 
You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.